Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be denesting a radical. So we have the cube root of 10 plus 7 root 2, and we're going to simplify it. In other words, it's not going to have a radical inside another radical. Okay? So you can find definitions of denesting on the web, particularly Wikipedia. You can definitely something, you know, just check it out. So to be able to do this problem, I'll be presenting two methods. And one of the methods may not be conclusive because you'll see. Okay, let me start with the first method. So for my first method, since I'm going to try to denest it, it this will also show you what denesting looks like. I want to be able to write it as a plus b root 2. In other words, if I take a plus b root 2 and cube it, that should give me 10 plus 7 root 2. Does that make sense? For example, if you take 1 plus root 2 and cube it, what would you be getting? Let's find out. a cubed is 1, b cubed is 2 root 2. That's how I usually cube a sum. And then 3ab is going to be 3 root 2 times a plus b is 1 plus root 2. You can also use the binomial theorem directly. But here I get 3 plus 2, 5 root 2. And this gives me 3 times 2, which is 6. 1 plus 6 is 7. So this gives me 7 plus 5 root 2. So, if the problem was finding the cube root of 7 plus 5 root 2, then I could easily solve this problem and say that, okay, this is 1 plus root 2. You see, that's what I mean by a plus b root 2, where a and b are integers. Of course, in this case, they are positive integers. So, if I was looking for this, then a would be 1 and b would be 1. You see? That's how it works. So can we find other integers a and b such that when we cube, we get this one? And that's a good question. And by the way, there's a relationship between these two, which I'll talk about a little later. So let's proceed with this first. So I have cube root of 10 plus 7 root 2 being set equal to a plus b root 2. By the way, does it have to be like that? Can it be a root 2 plus b? Same idea, especially when there's a plus sign. You don't need to worry about it because it'll work either way. If it does, <laughs> there's no guarantee, right? So the next step would be cubing both sides to get rid of the radical. And of course, that's the whole idea. Now, how do you cube this? I'm going to use my formula again, a cubed. When I cube this, I'm going to be getting 2 root 2 and b cubed. So it's going to look like this, okay? Plus 3ab is going to give me 3 root 2ab, and then finally times a plus b, which is a plus b root 2, okay? You use whatever you have. And I want that to equal 10 plus 7 root 2, because the cube root and the cube cancel out, all right? Cool, cool. Now let's try to find the values of a and b from here, and let's see how we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and distribute and uh, compare the rational terms and irrational terms separately. So this is going to give me a cubed. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. That's 3 times 2, which is a 6. So that's going to be 6ab squared. And then we're going to have 2 root 2 or 2b cubed plus from here we're getting... 3a squared b, and that is multiplied by root 2. And I basically need to separate the rational and irrational parts. Because if two rational numbers are equal, like a plus b root 2 and c plus d root 2 are equal, and a and b or a, b, c, d are integers and not necessarily they could also be rationals, then a has to equal c and b has to equal d. And there's an and between them. Make sense? That's the whole idea. So from here, we can safely say that, hey, this should be 10 and this should be 7. So that gives us a nice system of equations. Just kidding. It's not nice at all because it's cubic. But guess what? It's kind of homogeneous. So we can do the following. We can basically replace B with something like AK. Okay? And that gives us the following. A cubed plus 6A times A squared K squared equals 10 which means a cubed times 1 plus 6k squared equals 10. And from the second equation, we get 2 times a cubed k cubed 
plus 3a squared times ak equals 7. And that gives us a cubed times 2k cubed plus 3k equals 7. Now, you can go ahead and bring these two together. And what we're going to do next is going to be mind-blowing. Not really. It's just going to be division, but it's important. A cubed cancels out, and we end up with a cubic equation in K, which you can solve for, hopefully. Of course, if K is rational, things are easier. And then plug it in, substitute, and solve for A and B. Okay, so the goal is to find K from here, but I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. Like I said earlier, this method, or one of the methods, may be incomplete. And this is the one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method is really cool, but it kind of depends on something we need to check first. And let me tell you something. Maybe not, I shouldn't be telling you, right? I don't want to give it away. I want you to go ahead and try to find A and B. But here's what I'd like you to check. Inside the radical, there's an expression, a radical expression, right? Like 10 plus 7 root 2. We're going to find the norm of this expression. What is that supposed to mean? The norm is basically, if you have A plus B root C, then the norm would be a squared minus b squared c, which means you square this, you square that, and you subtract that. In other words, the norm is obtained if you multiply a radical expression by its conjugate. Make sense? Okay, that's what I'm going to do. And if you do that, let's just multiply this by 10 minus 7 root 2, and that's going to give us, maybe I should use the different colors to indicate, hey, that's an add-on. So I'm trying to find the norm here. That's my goal. And that gives me 100 minus 49 times 2, which is 98. And that gives me 2. Uh-oh, that's not a perfect cube. So this is problematic. Houston, we have a problem. So what do we do? We kind of make it uh, nicer. And here's how you can make it nicer. And I, I could probably, if I don't forget, refer back to problem uh, solution method one and show you how we could use this uh, information. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by cube root of two and divide by that. And the reason behind that is very simple. When you multiply and distribute, you're going to get 20 plus 14 root two inside the radical. And of course, that will be divided by cube root two. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of it later. But here, if you look at the norm one more time, you're going to have 400 minus 196 times 2, which is 400 minus 392, which is 8, which is a perfect cube. And that's just perfect. You know what this means? This is ready for the nesting. Hmm. Yes, but how do you denest it knowing that it'll be denested, right? Uh, that's a good question. And this should kind of tell you that if its cube root has a... Okay, let me start over. If the radical inside the cube root has a norm of 8, its cube root is going to have a norm of 2. So here's what you need to think about. This needs to be, and by the way, I probably shouldn't use A and B because I already used it. So let's just do this now. This expression right here, let's call it C plus D root 2. And guess what? C squared minus 2D squared should be 2. Because we're talking about the norm of the cube root of an expression, which is the cube root of the norm. I hope that makes sense. So if you solve this equation, you realize, okay, C is supposed to be even. So you can replace C with 2E, and that'll be 4E squared minus 2D squared equals 2. Then it'll be 2E squared minus D squared equals 1. Okay, you can go on forever, but eventually you're going to realize that E is supposed to be 1, and D is supposed to be 1, because 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So E is 1, D is 1, which means you have a solution. In other words, if C is, if E is 1, then C is 2, and this means we have the cube root of 20 plus 14 root 2 as C plus D root 2, which is 2 plus 1 root 2, which is 2 plus root 2. And if you cube this, you're actually going to get this one. You can easily check that out. So that's not the answer, though, because we still need to divide by cube root of 2. So what am I going to do? Take this, divide by cube root of 2, and let's denest or simplify a little bit more. So how do you do that? Hmm. First of all, 
I kind of need to divide these. This is two to the first power. This is two to the power one third. So it's gonna be like two to the power two thirds. This is two to the power one half. This is two to the power one third. And one half minus one third is one over six, isn't it? I think so. And that's gonna be two to the power one over six. In other words, the answer is cube root of four plus the sixth root of two. And that'll be the most simplest denested form for our expression. And guess what the original expression was? Cube root of 10 plus 7 root 2. So it's equal to that. If you don't believe that, you can go ahead and check it out by cubing both sides. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.